Jesus is the King of King. Glorify your wonderful name tonight. We want to sing Ancient of Days tonight. Uh, I just sing blessing and honor, glory and power. Come on, let's clap our hands together. So gonna sing it your name tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to slow it down as you sing this song. Amen. Above all powers, above all kings. Amen. As you worship God tonight. Oh, 
rejected in the Lord like a rock, trampled on the ground. You took the fall, you thought of me, thought of me. together and even tonight God Lord we acknowledge your power we acknowledge your grace God in Jesus name um, you are wonderful Jesus hallelujah amen would like to pray tonight firstly God's grace and anointing upon this service you pray for a wedding season tonight pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit and you want to ask God to move upon the hearts of backsliders that God is going to restore them back you want to pray for the mother church pastor Setson at the congregation tonight, God's grace and wisdom towards all decision making. Then you also want to pray tonight for the baby churches. That's the Ubuntu, the Gaele family. Bring them before God, the congregation. Then you want to allow God, amen, to do something supernatural in their lives uh, and in their favor. Come on up tonight, the Kayuha family. Pray that God is going to equip them, prepare them, uh, and be able to provide for them towards that work. So, Ocho and our subs, uh, you pray for God's grace upon their lives. Uh, God's provision and uh, just pray for all your congregation as well uh, that you want to pray that God is going to raise up for himself and people there that are really in need uh, of his word and are going to be very helpful to the plan.
planting of this church, establishment of this church completely. Pray tonight for your family, your parents. Pray for those that are looking for jobs, that God is going to open doors in their favor, the sick, the hospital. You want to pray that God is going to touch them in a miracle way. The bound in prison, that God is going to visit them, is going to have a, them have a personal experience with Him. Pray for our pastor tonight and his family. Uh, God's grace and provisions upon their lives. Uh, then you want to pray for revival upon our city as you pray for you yourself that God would equip you, prepare you, and position you for that purpose. So we're going to pray in faith tonight. Uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus uh, that your grace is going to fill this place tonight. We pray for the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost in this place. Father, we pray we come against every opposition. Uh, we come against every stronghold. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you prepare an atmosphere, Lord God, of the Holy Ghost. We pray that you are going to anoint your word, anoint your preacher, God, to none. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you are going to minister to hearts, God, in this place. We pray that you give us convictions. We are praying, God, that you are going to give us repentant hearts. We are praying, God, for the grace we pray in the name of Jesus that you're going to touch upon the hearts of the backsliders. We are praying, God, that you're going to touch them, God. Would you take away the shame from them? Would you bring them back to you? We pray, God, do not, Lord. We are praying, lifting up our mother church. We pray for Pastor Setson. We are praying for the congregation in Windhoek. We pray that your grace be upon them. We are praying, God, that you're going to give them Give them the grace. We are praying that you move upon the life of Pastor Cesar. We are praying, God, that you are going to give him, God, to be the man, the leader that you have called him to be. Would you give him the wisdom? We are praying, God, for our baby churches. We pray for the Mundu. Lord, you are lifting up the Kaele family, God, tonight. We are praying that you are going to open doors for them. We pray, God, that you open doors. We pray. For favor, God, give them comfort. We are praying, God, give them men and women. We are trusting you, God, even for the finances, God. We pray, God, that you are going to move in the town of Tivudu. We are trusting you, God, who come on you. We pray, God, for the Kayuwa family. We pray, God, as they are preparing themselves for the journey. We pray that you are going to let everything to fall in place. We pray that you are going to to open doors. We are praying, God, for open doors of oh, job opportunities. We pray in the name of Jesus. Prepare them. Prepare the land for them. We pray for Ocho, for the takeover, Lord. We are praying that everything is going to go smooth. We pray, God, that you open doors job opportunities. We are praying in the name of Jesus. Accommodations. We are praying God to not. We are praying in the name of Jesus. There are different needs presented in this place. There are people that need jobs. There are people that need healing. There are people that need deliverance. Father, we are praying God that you are going to move on their behalf tonight. We are praying, we are trusting you, God, even for our family salvation. We pray, God, tonight, and we thank you, God, and we are trusting you, God, for the new converts, Lord. We pray, God, that you are going to lock them in. Would you root them, God, in your faith, God? And we are praying for spiritual growth. We are even praying, God, for the smooth takeover, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Pastor devil and the family God we are praying God that you are going to open doors for them we pray for favor God we pray God for faith, faithfulness God we thank you God for all that you are going to do in this place and all God's people shout with victory and say amen you can as well just stand around and welcome your neighbor
Good evening, church. Amen. Um, so before we get into our um, service tonight, I would just like to welcome everybody to the Potter's house. Um, we want to be cognizant of our weekly schedule. So um, on Mondays, Monday morning, Monday to Friday, we have the building open as early as um, 5 or 6 till 8 o'clock. And um, you know what? Just hold on. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Okay. So we have the building open earlier as um, 6 till um, 8 o'clock for morning prayer. Um, the building will be open. You come out. You speak to a pastor. You speak to Brother Abner. They have keys. You can come for morning prayers. Um, on the evenings, we have the sisters. They meet for sisters' fellowship. Um, talk to um, Sister Vanessa. Uh, some of the older saints, they always prepare that. Um, they meet. And um, our fellow sister Jessica is leaving. So um, you guys want to definitely meet this coming week. Because this coming week, um, you guys can go say your goodbyes, suck out a little bit of knowledge that she has, you know. Um, that will be a real blessing to you guys. In fact, you guys should talk tonight what will be the agenda for tomorrow so that you guys can really meet. I'm being serious, okay? Um, the brothers also meet every Monday for soccer practice. Tuesdays, we have our youth fellowship. Um, youth fellowship. Um, speak to Brother AJ, Brother Fanwell. Pastor, um, you'll be here for, for youth. Wednesday, we have um, our midweek service, our refueling. Um, the building's open as early as half past five in the evening until, um, um, brother, can you just keep volume on the mic? Um, until um, eight o'clock. Then we have on Thursdays our Bible study in C Point with Sister Vanessa, um, Brother AJ, Brother Fanwell. You get in touch with them, Sister Natasha. On Friday, we have our um, intercessory prayer. Um, what a wonderful time that is. You do not want to miss intercessory prayer. Every time you come, you leave changed. Okay? Saturday, we have our cleaning as early as 9 o'clock to 9.30. We have cleaning. Um, by When we are done cleaning, we go for um, outreach until 12 o'clock, sometimes half past 12, 1 o'clock. And then from there, the saints meet for the worship training. Um, last week we had, or yesterday we had, a good um, time uh, with a youth uh, music concert, okay? So in other announcements, we have um, our Christmas banquet. You come talk to me about your contribution. You want to come out? Um, yes, that will be all. So um, I want to take an offering tonight, okay? And um, we want to just get our Bibles I want you to follow with me. Get your Bible. Get out your Bible. Okay? So, um, the scripture that I'm going to read is James um, 3 verse 17. So, before we read that, um, I have quite a, a, a lengthy offering. Um, it's one of those conference offerings that I'm going to preach to you now. Um, before we get into the preaching, thank God it's 7 o'clock because... Um, we're going to have at least um, a good preaching tonight. So please, um, James 3 verse 17. So I was in my secret place with God, and I was praying for certain things. And I got this revelation in my spirit, because since before, when I, when I came from Ventuk to Wafish Bay, I've been praying about certain things in 2021. And until today, which is two years later, God is still telling me to be patient. And he said to me, patience, because I, I got to the point where I got frustrated with God, and I said, God, what are you telling me to be patient? I don't really know what patience means. And he said this, knowing or patience is knowing that you want something and knowing that you are going to get it or knowing that you will get it. So patience is knowing that you want something and knowing that you will get it, okay? Let that be in the back of your mind. So then we are going to read James because I'll explain that later. 
So James 3.17 says, KJV, says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Okay? It is wise to give. You get by giving. Um, I was in Ventuk this, um, this coming week, and I was telling my cousin that um, the world works on exact principles. Exact principles. What does that mean? It means that this whole construct of the building, the chairs, the music, this is an exact science. It means that we are not here by chance. These things are not here by chance. People can replicate this, and it's the same with money. The, f the, the, the art or the science of money can be replicated. Other people who made money can tell you exactly how they made money. So the problem is not the money that we don't have. It is the science that we don't understand. Okay? Okay. So one of them is the principle of sowing and reaping. It is no secret that we are commanded to give because he will open the windows of, he of heaven for us. It is of utmost importance that when you get a revelation about financing and giving, you understand this principle. Okay? Now, I was saying again and I'll repeat. Patience is knowing that you want something and knowing that you will get it. Because in Corinthians it says that if we sow spiritual blessings among you, is it too much to ask or is it too much to reap material things from you? Okay? And that goes for our past. I'm speaking on his behalf. It says further in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 12. That was 11. If others receive this right from me, are we not more deserving? But we have not made use of this right. Instead, we endure everything so that we may not be a hindrance to the gospel of Christ. Okay? 1 Corinthians 19, verse 11. If we, now listen, if this was pastor speaking to you informally, he says, if I sp sowed the word of God which is spiritual among you, then why should I not reap the material things from you? Do you get it? Because um, the word of God says that the laborer is worthy of his hire. Meaning that the man of God, as he's working, he should live from the gospel. Okay? And verse 12 says in the end of that verse, it says, so that we may not be a hindrance to the gospel of Christ. Now, what if you are sitting with the money and you are the hindrance to the gospel of Christ? Look at, look, you might not be able to give now, but it's month end. Divundu, Kabanyab, Ocho, the rent and water. Pastor is traveling soon. We need kingdom financiers and pillars. Okay? Because someone would say, Today is the 23rd. It's evening service. I gave in the morning. No, that is not what I'm asking. That's why I said in the beginning of this offering that I'm taking one of those con um, offerings that even during this coming week, we are all going to be reminded of, of this offering that we really need to step it up. Okay? I keep telling my wife that I need to become a millionaire for the sake of God's kingdom. I need to become a millionaire. Because you know what? We are not doing ourselves a favor by aiming in the thousands. Our conference alone runs into the hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. It means that if you want to cover a conference, then you need to be a millionaire. You need to be a millionaire. But it starts here. With the wisdom that is from above. I strongly believe that we are entering a phase where we need to mature and recognize the kingdom of God. We are a mother church, and this building is becoming so small for us. We need to pick up our building project and fight for our right for land and a building. Okay? Now, Exodus 3.17 says, And I have said, I will bring you up out of the sacrifice, out of the affliction of Egypt, unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites, in the Parasites, in the Hivites, in the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. I remember when, South African, when the South African ladies were here, okay? And before that, why I gave Exodus 3.17 is for this. 
look, one of the things that you need to recognize in inheritance is land. That's why we need to fight for our building project. We had an opportunity to buy land, but we missed that opportunity. But look at how we are running our evening service. We need to now go back to content even as our outgoing pastor is going out and our incoming pastor is coming. We cannot contain what God is doing. So we need to partnership with, partner with our, our pastors and say, Pastor, let's open up that bank account. We can give a 50 every month. We can give this every month and get to a point where we can really say we want a bigger building. We need new equipment, you know. That is vision, okay. And I remember when the South African ladies were here last year, God gave a prophecy through Mrs. Gidina, which Pastor Bobby prophesied, and this is what God said. God said he will give us people who will hold the rope, kingdom financiers and, prophet and pillars. Are you engaging this prophecy? Because that is our portion. More, more personally, it is your portion. Because since that prophecy came, I said, God said he will give us people. And I said, God, whether you called me or not, I want to be one of those people that has that money. It's one thing to watch other people give, but what about yourself? And prophecies can fail if you're not going to engage them. And if you're going to say, ah, this prophecy, who's that person going to be? It's not me. With that attitude, you surely you're going to miss God. Okay? So, God also said in the Psalms that I have placed you on a rock. In the gospel, it is spoken of a structure placed on the rock, meaning a house. Jesus is that, is that cornerstone and rock. Now, if you look clearly, I'm proving the scripture that it is wisdom. Proverbs says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And James talks about those that do not have wisdom. In James 1, should ask wisdom. James 1 verse 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask him of God that give to all men liberally and abradeth not, meaning reprimand, and it shall be given him. I remember my first conference having nothing to give and selling my phone and putting the money in the offering. And this was also the early church, meaning the church of the apostolic time when Jesus ascended. Okay? They sold their possessions and brought the money to the apostles' feet. Just don't be like Ananias and Sapphira and hold back of that portion. Because to be honest, the early church were those people. They sold and laid the money here. And I remember that, look, it, it's not the principle that I want you to see or the act that is happening, but it is the zeal that I want you to get. The zeal that these people got a revelation about the kingdom. Okay? I got a revelation that you don't have to believe to exercise faith. But if you don't believe and therefore won't give, that is foolish. Okay? What am I saying? Someone said, um, no, I don't want to confuse people. Let me leave that one. Okay? And, and again, I say, that this message offering is not really for now. But today is the 23rd, and we need our helping hand in the work of God. Maybe you need a job. Maybe you need a husband or a wife. Maybe you need deliverance. Maybe you need salvation for your family. Maybe you just want your children says, God says, I can do all that for you. But when you get money this month, remember first the house of God and what the widow of Zarephath did and give something to the man of God and your jar of oil shall not run out. That is what God is saying. So as we remember all these things that have been spoken here, you remember what it means for this man of God to be running from Ocho to Ventuk to Wafish Bay, and not him only. Pastor Neville, Sister Mona are coming. They are coming to a house where they don't have a job, and we don't know when they are going to get a job. But why should they get a job is the problem or the point. We want them to be able to say, you know what, I don't need a job. They, 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 there is enough in the house of God for me and my family. And that is what we should aim for so that every time when the man of God comes, sits here and preaches, he's preaching a power-packed sermon, a message full of weight, a message that he meditated on the entire week. Because, look, it's not nice when you come stand here, your pastor is tired, 
he says a few words and you're like, is that all? I thought this is a man of God. But the man of God has a job. The man of God must worry about finances. The man of God was struggling, laboring at some weird job with some crazy boss, some demonic witchcraft based thing that has nothing to do with what God wants. That is what the man of God is going through. Then you complain that the man of God is not preaching and you say, ah, they sent us another one. Who is this man of God? Now you complain about all the pop that the man of God is preaching to you. Is that really what we want? Uh, who wants that? Nobody wants that. If you want salad, some chicken, some biryani rice, some, some of that, some of all these things, then we need to get to a point where we take our giving seriously. Okay? We really need to get to a point. And I know today is the 23rd. Look, some people, we, I don't know if we have any bankers and teachers and police officers in here. I don't think so. So I know most of us only get paid from the 25th into the 28th and the 30th. But really, going above and beyond this month end. As soon as you get that money, remember your tithes, remember your offering, and remember the man of God. Because we really want to get to a point where we can say, you know what, we got a new land, we got a new building. We can send Pastor Matthew and Sister Mary something. Let your friendship and let's remember their labor of love. So as, as that was said, let's welcome the ashes as they come. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Bless the offering the tithe. Let's sing that song, we have a vision. Hosanna. Let's welcome Pastor Abner as he comes tonight. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You know, um, we were just having a conversation with Pastor um, this uh, morning. And uh, Pastor said, hey, I... I in fact, you are going, man. And as you are going, listen, you're actually supposed to bless the church at least with your last message, man. This probably is the last time you're going to get a chance to, you know, share something with the saints uh, in terms of preaching uh, unless you come for um, a revival or something like that. And uh, um, uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, what could it be that one can really share with the saints. 
you know, um, after, you know, such a long time, or if I should say perhaps uh, after such a 11 years of being together, some of us, we've been together in this church for so many years. And uh, really, I was just thinking to myself, what is it, you know, that one can really share in terms of uh, a final message? You know, it, it, it was, it, it, firstly, I had a sermon ready that I um, actually, um, uh, as we were just fasting throughout the week, uh, uh, that I just wanted to share, you know, in a, Really, I wanted to deal with a lot of topics. I wanted to come up here with a serious whip and uh, get things in order. But the book just disappeared at home. And uh, I looked for the book. I could not find the book. And uh, um, I resorted to uh, something else uh, that God has laid upon my heart. And uh, after a while, we found the book. And uh, I was telling Pastor, hey, I think. God has already told me what I need to say to the church. You know, as we are about to just start off, we had just the worship team, and many of us were sitting and watching and saying, hey, what, what's going on with these guys, man? Where's the drama? Uh, the drama is the usher, and the drama is also giving the finances, and then he had to run and complain. You know, and uh, we can see all these things, and we're thinking to ourselves, my days, man, what's going on? And uh, it dawned on me that many a times throughout the years, one has been actively involved in so many ministries. One has uh, put on so many hats. And uh, it really got me thinking, what can I say that I did not already say to the saints in so many ways? You know, and when I spoke of this, there's one specific text that came to mind. And uh, that is the text of Galatians. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. And I really just wanted to encourage the saints. I want to preach a message that is entitled, Persevering in Doing Good. Many times we keep hearing over and over, we are a church that is not just a, a baby church anymore. But we are a church that has baby churches. We have grown in uh, these past years. I, I remember when this church was established uh, by Pastor Steve Marshall. When the Marshalls came and um, came and established the church here. So many wonderful memories. You know, uh, we had uh, Brother Matthew Kashitiko um, saying that um, the church, this church of Wolfish Bay was actually started in a Bashu in Namport. And uh, um, as a Bible study, they did it there. They took it over um, to the John Verken Stadium. And uh, after John Verken Stadium, they came down to the old pick and pay building. And uh, there's so many stories of even how we got this building that we're in right now. Remember, uh, hey, uh, the lease was getting done and uh, time was running out. And uh, listen, we had to get out of that building. Uh, there was no other building. And uh, I remember Pastor Steve being a man of faith saying, hey, listen, we're going to fast. We're going to pray. And we're going to walk down the street. God's going to show us the building. And uh, they walked down the street and they prayed as they are walking, they're praying. Uh, and uh, as they come to this corner, God just speaks to him and says, hey, that's the building you're going to go in next. You know, and uh, they came, uh, get to know the owner, uh, witness to the owner. Uh, the owner got saved. Uh, and glory be to God, we have been in this building ever since. But one of the things is I had a past relationship with this building. Back in the days, this building used to be a bar. And uh, as this building downstairs, we started downstairs, this building used to be a bar. And these were places I used to come to. This were, we were the owners of these places. Uh, we would sit while people are sitting on chairs. We are sitting on top of the tables with chairs. 
That's how much we owned the bar. And uh, it is so ironic for God to bring me back here, you know. And uh, this time around, God has brought me back and he saved me. You know, he gave me a new destiny. He, he, I got to meet so many wonderful people in God. Um, uh, God has really projected me out into, a, you know, I, I, I really, I could say the stratosphere. You know, and um, thinking of all that, bringing us back to what the Galatians went through. Apostle Paul had a relationship with the, with the um, Galatians and uh, they were such a rebellious bunch. Many of us know the famous scripture. They say, uh, oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? Listen, this was a rebuke from Apostle Paul to the Galatians. It gives you a picture that the Galatians, uh, they always had this push and pull. And I remember so many people here in church that we had so many confrontations with. I remember times we would be speaking in each other's mouths. There will be times we say, hey, hey, bro, listen, this is not to be done in church. No, you're not going to do this. And, uh, you know, glory be to God that we have grown throughout the years. We have grown as a church. We have matured in our word. Men, uh, sisters, we have grown in relationship. And uh, I want to just close off this chapter, not rather with a rebuke or with a whip, but rather with love and encouragement. And uh, that's, I want to preach this message. Let us just turn our Bibles there and uh, read the text. The Bible says in the ESV translation, um, Galatians uh, chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Let us pray. Father God, we come by the blood this evening. We pray, God, Father, I let your word, God, come alive in us this evening, God. God, I pray, hide me behind the cross. Let it not be flesh, let it not be me boasting, God, but, but speak to your people through me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Persevering in doing good. Many of us, we are aware of the vision of the church. We have embraced the vision. That's the only reason why we are still pressing on. It is to get, it is to keep, and it's to grow. Our desire is to get people saved. Our desire is to encourage, preach the gospel, confront evil out there. Get people saved, locked into church. We keep them in church uh, through relationship. We get them married uh, and then we send them out. We grow them and we send them out. And that has always been the backbone of our church. And that is what I've come to love in our fellowship. Is that we are a church that's about world evangelism, discipleship, and church planning. And many of us, we have to come to that realization. Just as this text and uh, what Apostle Paul was encouraging the Galatians, uh, it is that they should not grow weary uh, of doing good. They should not grow weary uh, of maintaining the vision. Maintaining what is good, they should have the vision before them. Because in due season, uh, they will reap the rewards uh, the, if they do not give up. See, saints, simply, uh, similarly, as... Uh, we, my wife and I, pastor, as we are preparing to leave this church, I want to encourage you uh, to keep persevering uh, in the face of difficult circumstances. Yes, things might not be the same. Perhaps we'll realize that things, listen, I am used to this way, but now things have changed. Hey, bro, Abner is not there on the keyboard anymore. It's not sounding the same anymore. Where is that uh, musical? Hey, listen, uh, why do we keep? There are going to come difficulties. There are going to come obstacles. You know, um, uh, we always uh, have these people encouraging us. And say, hey, listen, man, if there's a fellowship to be organized, you should do it. And uh, there are going to come obstacles. But it is that we should not grow weary of doing good. 
Firstly, I want us to um, look at a few steps when it comes to persevering when we have to do good or persevering in doing good. Firstly, we have to trust in God's faithfulness. One thing I can tell you, saints, this uh, evening, uh, it is that it is not our church, it is God's church. And we ought to be faithful, we ought to hold on uh, to the hymn of his garment. We have to hold on to the fact that God is faithful. God is going to carry us through. Despite the difficulties, uh, despite what it is that we are facing right now, uh, what we are feeling right now, uh, many of the brethren, uh, the sisters showing up to us saying that, listen, they are crying and saying, I don't want you guys to leave. Um, uh, one of the funniest comments that I heard was uh, one of the sisters saying, listen, man, perhaps I will write a personal letter to Pastor Setson so you guys can just continue remaining a little bit longer. You know, yes, and these are realities, church. As we face difficulties uh, and challenges, uh, we must trust in God's faithfulness. The Bible says uh, in uh, uh, Lamentations chapter 3, verse uh, 22 and 23, it says that as we read, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Uh, great is your faithfulness. Listen, church, there is another day coming. The things of God are not going to end with us. The things with God are not going to end with pastor living. But the things of God are going to press on. And the desire is that we hold on to the revelation uh, that God is faithful. You know, I, I promised myself I'm not going to get emotionally in this place. He says we must trust in God's faithfulness and know uh, that he will never leave us nor forsake us, church. Because you know what? It has nothing to do with us, but it has all to do with God. It is God that will keep us, keeping us on. It is when we hold on and fix our eyes on Jesus that we will continue pressing on. You see, church, we can all remember the sermons. I remember one of the sermons that I preached and said, a level of seriousness. We ought to have a level of seriousness when it comes to the things of God. When it comes to ministry, I remember a sermon I preached saying that the checklist believer. I don't know how many of you remember this. Saying that, hey, listen, as believers, we ought not to just tick off certain things in our life. Saying that, hey, I came to church, I tick that one off. I gave in the offering, I tick that one. At least I prayed, I tick that one off. We ought not to be checklist believers. As you guys are moving forward with Pastor Neville, as he's taking over. Focus on the fact that, hey, listen, I do not want to be a checklist believer. But I ought to have a certain level of seriousness. I ought to strive for excellence. Can you say amen, church? Secondly, I want to talk about encouraging one another. Now more than ever, listen, we don't leave our brothers behind. Uh, one man states and he says, each one teach one. We ought to hold each other's hands during this time of difficulty. During this time that we feel, hey, we are losing. You ought to look onto your brother. Say, hey, I don't see brother so and so in church anymore. Where is that brother? Let me call him. Let me encourage him during this time. That listen, I'm not going to leave you behind, but we are going to encourage one another. The Bible tells us uh, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25. Let us not consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing so. But encouraging one another. 
Say, hey, I don't see brother so-and-so at church. I don't see sister so and Listen, I'm not going to do it in a sense of ego. But I know that perhaps she might be discouraged. Perhaps uh, one of the pastors was calling on people. Our new pastor that's coming in does not know people yet. Say, so let me stand in the gap. We always say, hey, listen, uh, we are a church that's about evangelism, discipleship. And one key factor of discipleship that I learned over the years is that disciples make disciples. You see, it is when a disciple has caught the revelation that, listen, it is not just about me. It is not just about me coming to church. It is not just about me standing strong for God. It is not just to do with me shining up, but it has to do with me caring for the next man. You see, the military trains uh, soldiers. Um, uh, the, um, the, the, the American uh, uh, soldiers, the army, teaches men that, listen, the first thing that they teach you at the academy or at the base is not to how to carry, how to, how to shoot, how to aim, or anything like that. The first thing they teach you is how to carry a dead body. Because they want to encourage you to say, we never leave a man behind. We pick him up to press forward. So, so it is. Let us adapt to the mindset that we don't leave a man behind. During this time of discouragement, uh, during this time of difficulty, we say, hey, listen, we are going to persevere together. For many of us, perhaps you are not involved. Perhaps you have been coming to church, you have been sitting, and you say, hey, things are moving. There is, there is always singers here. There is always slides there. But do not be fooled. There were people in the engine that was making those parts move. There were people in the engine that was making things happen. There were people in the engine that had the mindset and the attitude of making things happen. And I want to encourage you. Listen, saints. When we speak of encouraging one another. We speak of getting involved in the things of God. We speak of not just coming to church for the sake of coming. But say, hey, listen. I'm going to do my part. Despite what I'm feeling. Despite the hurt. that Hey, I remember, man. The first time when uh, Pastor Steve, their visa was not approved. After two years of being here, they were told, ah, listen, uh, we are not going to extend your visa anymore. We are giving you one week to leave Namibia. The hurt we felt here in church. You know, tears were falling down. Listen, we, we didn't know what to do. Should I continue serving God? Oh, sh- what, what am I going back to my old friends? But it was because of people, brothers and sisters in church, that were able to say, hey, I'm not going to leave that brother behind. I'm going to keep calling him. I'm going to go to his house. I'm going to pick him up. I'm going to say, hey, listen, listen, bro. This is not how we do it. Let's serve God. And it's because of that attitude uh, and that mindset uh, that we continued on. We must encourage one another to persevere uh, in doing good. And we, if we have to classify doing good, it speaks about doing the things of God. Can you say amen, church? Thirdly, I want to speak about focusing uh, on the internal reward. Yes, it might be that we look at this tiny church And we say, hey, this is it. That's what I used to think until I was invited and taken along to the harvesters. Back then, um, the church did not have, um, uh, our fellowship in Namibia did not have um, uh, enough churches to uh, make a conference. So we had the harvesters. And uh, when I arrived there, I realized, hey, I'm not just part of a tiny church in Wolfish Bay. But I'm part of a greater vision. And one thing is that 
There is a reward from seeing others serving God. There is a reward uh, also in heaven. The Bible says uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, 15 uh, verse 58. He says, Paul writes and says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let, not, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor is not in vain. See, church, we remember, we must remember uh, that our labor uh, is not in vain. Listen, for you to say, I'm going to continue serving God. I'm going to press on towards the mark of high calling. Uh, is not in vain. Number one, you're not serving God for other people. You are serving God for who he is. And you want to continue within that same thought process. That listen, hey, the joy that I'm getting from serving God. Not just that, but the internal reward that I'm getting from serving God. That should keep me strengthened. That should keep me keeping on. I remember so many times telling my wife, hey, listen, man, I really don't know when that day is going to come, how it's going to be. But one thing is it gives me great joy to see my brethren still pressing on. It gives me great joy to see my brethren still pressing on. There is a, one of the sermons that we did few few years ago also i say is an intentional attitude speaks about us having an intentional attitude us speaking of us it speaks about us doing things intentionally not just for the sake of doing them but let us focus on what it is that we want to do for god and we do it with an open heart fourthly i want to speak about seeking God's strength. Because one thing is for certain, you won't do it on your own strength. As we are living, we are also not living on our own strength. We are hoping that God will give us the strength. Many people are making jokes and say, hey, listen, we have had so many testimonies. The pastor says, hey, it's hot out there, man. You go in the field, hey, it's tough, man. And that's we are just holding on God. Say, hey, it's God who will give us the strength. It is God who will carry us through. So it is Apostle Paul once says again in Philippians 4 verse 13. He says, I can do all things uh, through Christ uh, who strengthens me. I want to tell you saints this uh, evening that yes, we face difficulties. Yes, we face uh, something that is hurting within us. But God, God give us the strength. And he's the one who carries us through. You see, we face these challenges. And says, we must rely on God's strength uh, to persevere in doing good. Knowing that we can do all things uh, through Christ. Who strengthens us. You see, we can never do this of our own. But it is only the strength of God that can really carry us through. As a church, it is when we embrace the vision and say, I'm going to hold on to this man. Despite what? God's going to give me a strength. Listen, I'm not going to turn back because pastor is not here. No one else is. Listen, it's only pastor who, get, who had my number. He won't call me again. Who's going who's gonna to speak a word in my life? Many times, we, 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 yes, it's true. These things, they strengthen us. They help us through. But the main thing is for us to seek God's strength. Because God's strength is the ultimate strength. It is only God's strength that will carry us through. See, it is when we hold on to God. Listen, saints, the place we have to come to is the place of obedience. 
And not obedience to someone, but to God. It is obedience to a commitment. It is obedience towards the vision. Which is to get, to keep, and to grow. We always say, when we invite people, and we say, welcome to the Potter's House Christian Fellowship Church. Where Jesus Christ is alive and is still in the business of changing our lives. See, that changing of lives will only come when we hold on to obedience. Just as Pastor said this uh, um, afternoon, he said, he said, hey, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because yes, we might sacrifice some money. We might, listen, but when you obey God, you are able to achieve everything. I always hinge upon that scripture that says in Galatians 2 verse 20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I live now, I live by faith through Christ who strengthens me. You see, it is nothing to do with what we can do. It has never been, oh, it is good when Brother Abner is standing there and singing. It is always good when, you know, I remember so many weddings where the guys would say, listen, me, I'm not going to be an MC, man. Brother Abner needs to be the MC. But it had nothing to do with what I can do. But it is what God can do through you. And at this uh, uh, evening, I want to encourage the saints saying that, listen, don't focus on what you have lost but focus on what you can gain through Christ. Don't focus on the relationship that has been shattered or the plans that you have that has been shattered. Or perhaps for some of us, it is just that we met right now and you feel, I can have had a longer relationship with this person, but it has been severed. But look at what I can gain in God. Because at the end of the day, the aim is we are a body of believers. Can you say amen, church? It is not just this tiny church here that just wants to invite people to church and sit here and have a wonderful time and go home. Uh, akuna matata. But it has to do with a greater vision that we want to reach the nations for Jesus. Can you say amen, church? We want to we wanna preach the gospel. We want to we wanna get you married and send you out. To go preach the gospel. That is the aim. Listen, if it, it's got nothing to do with just making you sit here Sunday service after service and make you feel good. The desire is for you to go out there one day and preach the gospel. See, saints, in conclusion, as we prepare to leave this church, I want to encourage you, saints. Keep on persevering in doing good. Trust in God's faithfulness. Encourage one another. I want to state that, listen, focus on the eternal reward. Seek God's strength. Because when we have those pillars, when we have those things in place, we can never fail. One thing is that I am grateful for the relationships, for the time that we had together. I am grateful. You know, I'm literally holding my tears back. Listen, it's painful. But it's not my will, but God's will be done. You know, many, uh, I, was, I was telling my wife, hey, listen, we, 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 we at least, uh, let's plan for two years. Uh, after two years, we'll go nice. Uh, we will, uh, listen, listen, but our ways is not God's ways. God works differently. Once something has been released from the mysteria of God, it has been released. It is for us to grab it. I, I was telling uh, 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 Brother Topias, whenever we are having um, um, morning prayer here, and uh, we discussed some scriptures afterwards, and we spoke about the issue or rather the encounter that Elijah and Elijah had. And uh, how it is that the vision is not something that you are forced into. Listen, um, Elijah passed by 
as Elijah was busy herding uh, his father's cows. And he said, hey, listen, he hid that river with the mantle that he was having. He hid that part the ways of the river and he passed by and it was taken up by God. It was the desire of Elijah to say, hey, listen, I'm going to do what I saw that man do. The vision was cast. And it is on to us to pick it up. It is up to us to pick up the mental and say, hey, listen, I saw pastor come out for every morning prayer. I'm going to come out for morning prayer. I saw pastor on every outreach. I'm going to come out for outreach. I saw pastor call people uh, and encourage them. Uh, and I'm going to do the same. I saw all these things being done uh, by my fellow brethren that went before me. Uh, and thus I'm going to do it. Elisha decided to pick up the mantle. And this evening, it's on you. It's on you, church. Whether you want to pick up the mantle or not. It's on you whether you want to do the right thing or not. Press on or not. You have to make the right decision. The Bible says in Joshua... Where Joshua had his last speech to his people in Shechem. And he says, choose you this day who you will serve. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. It is up to you, saints. It's up to you whether you want to continue living a life and saying, hey, listen. Me, I'm just going to do this much for God. Oh, I'm going to be sold out for God. It is up to you to say, hey, listen, just up to here, no more. Oh, I'm going to do what I saw being done by the brothers that went before me. You know, when I came to church, God said, the ushers would let you sit in front. They'll start packing the chairs from front. And uh, as you're sitting there in front, you don't know whether you should pray soft or pray loud. But then you hear the men behind. And they are praying loud. The men are taking dominion. They are, they are, they are breaking down all the strongholds, men. Before service, they are, they are, listen, they are dealing with business behind. And because of what I saw today, you see me standing at the back before service and praying. And say, hey, I'm going to lay hold of God. I'm going to contend for fruits in this service. I'm going to pray so God can move. God, give me a word in this service. It is because I saw them do it, the brothers that went before me, that I chose to do it. And that is, that is the question mark that is left before you this evening, saints. So I would say I'm grateful for the relationships and the experience that I've gained during my time here. See, saints, I'm confident that this church will continue to thrive. This is not the end. I'm confident this church is going to continue to strive. And you will continue to persevere in doing good. Say, so let us continue to trust God's faithfulness and persevere in doing good. We are not doing it because of someone, but because of God. I know this sermon was not so focused on sin. But we know that when we're speaking about doing good for God, it has to do with you cutting off certain relationships. It has to do with you cutting off certain attitudes. It has to do with you cutting off certain behaviors, certain ways of thinking. Say, hey, listen, I know this thing is not good for me. It is not good before God. If I have to persevere in doing good, there are certain things I have to cut off. There are certain things I have to stop, certain attitudes, certain ways I behave. Why? Because for the greater good, I want to persevere in doing good. And I want to leave you with this. There is a quote by a British um, preacher that used to be around back in those days. His name is uh, Samuel Chadwick. 
I think I uh, re recently also put it on the church group. Let me just quickly find it because definitely I have to share it before I just uh, give over the service. So. I don't know, um, uh, Brother uh, Lando, would you just uh, search for it there and uh, place it for us? Because I definitely want us to just look at it. Samuel Chet, we say we give ourselves to prayer. No, it's 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 emotional, but God is faithful. God is faithful. He's gonna make things happen in the midst of us. We're gonna experience revival. We're gonna things. We're gonna see things change in this place. I think I I, I shared it on the church group as well. But it actually speaks because I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to say that. Let me share it again on the church group. But I want to say it face to face because this time around, I want you all to just understand the weight of it. Let me just bear, bear with me. Bear with me. Let me just quickly get it. says uh, uh, he was a, a British evangelist and one thing that he said is he said this is something like a war cry for believers it is something that we would say listen me I stand for this he says we give ourselves to prayer we do not preach a gospel uh, we preach a gospel uh, that says to the uttermost. He says, we witness to its power. We do not argue about worldliness. We witness. We do not discuss philosophies. We preach the gospel. We do not speculate about the destiny of sinners. We plug them as brands from a burning. We ask no man's patronage. We beg no man's money. We fear no man's frown. Let no man join us who is afraid. And we want none but those who are saved, sanctified, and aflamed with the fire of the Holy Ghost. See, church, Samuel Chadwick grabs the revelation. That, listen, this is what I stand for. This is the battleground. We do not just... Speak about worldliness. We witness. We preach the gospel to the uttermost. Let none follow us who is afraid. We want only those who are aflamed, sanctified with the Holy Ghost. That is the final word I want to leave you with. Before I now burst out in tears here. Let us just bow our heads in our just thank God for the service. Many of us sitting in his place, probably wondering why is this man so angry? Why is he so vexed in his spirit? But it's because we want to stress that point that we're doing this for God. We're not just doing this merely because we feel good. We are not doing this because it gives us some kind of something. But we do it because of what God has done on the cross for us. We do it because, hey, listen, man. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. The life I live now, I live by faith through Christ who strengthens me. And if you're sitting in his place and you are still double-minded, you are still one foot in church and one foot outside of church, you still say, hey, I'm going to play by my rules. 
I want to speak to you this evening. And I want to say, listen, time is running out. Time is running out. You want to make things right with God. You want to make things right with God while you still got time. Perhaps you're sitting in his place. And the life that you're living, you know it's not right before God. The life you know in your heart of hearts that, hey, I need to make things right with God. I want to give us this opportunity and say, would you lift up your hand? Would you say, hey, bro, bro, listen, listen. Enough is enough. I'm tired. I'm going to make things right with God. Perhaps you're sitting in his place and you're thinking, hey, it's good what you were saying. But I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. What about my reputation? What are people going to say? How are people going to look at this? Would you lift up your hand? God bless you. I see that hand. We're not doing this. To feel good. But we have answered to a higher calling. I want to change, before I change the order of the service, I want to give one more, one more opportunity. Perhaps you're here. You have heard the preaching. And you say, hey, hey, listen, I want to rededicate my life to God. Yes, I've prayed before. I've accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. But I still do the wrong things. I'm still speaking to boys. I'm still, even though I say forgive me, I still go back to my vomit. I still go back and do the things that I'm not supposed to do. Now's your chance. Say, hey, bro, remember me in a prayer. Would you lift up your hand? Make things right with God. Glory be to God. Sister, would you, would, would you come? Would you come? Perhaps you have not lifted up your hand, but you want to make things right with God. Would you come? Come from your seat. I need, I need an altar worker just to pray with us. I get a sister to just pray with us. And as they're praying, I want to speak to the saints. I want to speak to the saints and say, hey, this, this one was directed to you. We are not just a tiny church here in Warfish Bay. We are not just some people that want to do something good here. But I want to urge you, rise up. Rise up. Rise up and do the right thing. Rise up and stand for God. Stand strong. Stand tall. Now is the time when things are going to... Listen, now is the time, saints. Would you rise up? I want to open up these altars. Would you come? Come find a place. Come lay hold of God. Leave it all on the altars. Would you come? Come find a place. Oh, God, Jesus. God, help us persevere in doing good. God in his place. Say, God, from now on, I'm going to do what is right. From now on, I'm going to care with my brethren. From now on, I'm going to rise up towards the mark of high calling. From now on, I'm going to stop living for myself. From now on, I'm going to do what is right. My God, God in his place. You are worthy. 
Side of church. You know, and I survived that not because of my ability or my sense of endurance, but it was because of my brethren in church. Let us hold on to these relationships that we are having. Let's strengthen. Want to just let us just give a clap of him as pastor's gonna come. Just want to thank God for, for that ministry. It was really just a good message just to, to help us. So let us just go out and continue just saving God. Save God. Save God. Save God. Sometimes we find ourselves at a point where we won't really understand certain things but one day you are going to understand. So that's why the plans of God are always not our plans. I will really thank God for that. So let us just leave this place in courage. And we, we, we just be there for one another. You know, we pray for each other. We encourage one another. And life is going to continue. And God is even going to, to help us more. He's going to shape us. And he's even going to equip us. And we are going to become uh, Christians that he actually wants us to, uh, to be. Uh, we are going to close off. And um, uh, we are going to start a new week. And let's just start a new week. Uh, with that attitude, with that mind that, you know, this week is going to be a better week. You know, we must always be looking forward that uh, the next day is always going to be better than, than the current day. We are going to close off uh, in prayer. I uh, just want to, uh, just to ask Brother uh, Moyo just to thank God and close off in prayer. <laughs>